A few days ago, a friend of mine introduced me to this browser, which is new to me. And I quickly realized that this is probably the go-to browser for web development. What's up everyone? My name is James Q Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And probably like you, I've used Google Chrome almost for the entirety of my development career. But I found a new tool, a new browser that I think is well worth looking at if you are a web developer from a testing perspective, from a visual perspective, from an accessibility perspective, from just an overall tooling perspective. There's so many things that blew me away. I actually did a live stream with my, my friend Killian who created this browser, which is Polypane. And he showed me all these things that I had never even imagined. And I was pretty blown away. So you can go watch the full live stream if you want a deeper introduction to this. But for now, I'll just give you kind of a high level of here are some of the most amazing features that stand out to me. And stick around because I'll save my very favorite feature for the end. So one thing I want to call out pretty quickly because people have called this out in previous videos is this is a paid product. So I, I think this is well worth it, but it's $9 a month. It's a subscription. It's billed at $108 a year. You get two months free with the yearly plan. And I have an exclusive discount code in the description below that you can use. The coupon code is JamesQQuick20. The link will take you directly there and apply it. This is not sponsored. This is just something that I am super excited about. I'm excited to use myself and I hope that you'll think it's worth it, but at least check it out and kind of give it an idea or give it a shot to see what you think. Now, one more thing I want to call out is this is not necessarily a full replacement for Google Chrome. This is specifically a replacement for developing and testing my websites to make sure I've fixed all the things I want to before actually shipping it to production. So I still use Google Chrome on a regular basis, but I'm going to use Polypane more and more for the actual development and testing process along the way. So let's go ahead and switch over. And I already have my personal website running. So I've got my personal website running here in VS Code. And then here's what you get inside of Polypane. So probably the first thing that you realize is that, hey, we have multiple different instances of this app showing. So part of the problem that we all have is we test our applications like this. We um, run it in full screen mode, we then shrink it down and we do all of this stuff and we see how it works. And then we choose like a mobile device and go down to this or whatever, right? We kind of go back and forth with this. Well, Polypane is really cool because you can have these side by side. Now, another really neat thing about this, and I've got some sort of bug with this image that I have to figure out, but another really cool thing about this is that they move synchronously. So if I scroll, it's going to scroll all of them, which gives me an idea of where I am on the page with all of these. Because even if you had two browsers side by side, and you tried to scroll through manually, they wouldn't be in sync. And so you'd be scrolling one scrolling another blah, blah, blah. So this is actually really neat. Now you can fully control how many and what types of these there are. So inside of here, if I hover over this title, I can remove a pane, I can remove this pane, I can remove that one if I want. But one of the things that's also really cool, well, I guess I should also clarify, like you can you can determine the uh, width and height of all of these. So notice I changed this to 500 or I can change this to 1000 or whatever I want. You can determine the width and height of all of these and be able to customize them, create new ones, et cetera. So when you create new ones, you have the ability to choose from stuff that you're probably familiar with in Google Chrome, et cetera. But another fun thing is that uh, there's a button here to create six panes from my website breakpoints. So I use Tailwind CSS, which I guess has six breakpoints behind the scenes. And this will auto generate all of these frames based on those endpoints. So here's all the different endpoints, breakpoints that I have. And I can go and scroll and see all of these. And I might say, okay, this is very similar to this one. I don't need another one. And then go on and inspect from there. Really, really cool stuff. All right, so there's another thing that I think is is really cool in here. Uh, and the basics of this is inspect element. So you can see if I inspect, hover on this element, you can see you get probably the same information as you get in other uh, tools like Chrome Developer Tools. You get the color, you get the font, you get the margin, the role, focusable, you get all these things that you're probably used to, which is fine. The cool thing about this though, is if I go from, let's say this one to this one, the font size is actually different. So as I shrink down the screen, I change the font size so it fits a little better. And you can actually see those right in line. So if I uh, inspect an element and hover over this one, on the right side, you'll see that the font is 96 pixels. On the left side, you'll see that the font is 60 pixels. So again, a great way to like see how these things look on the different uh, frames, but then also make sure that your sizes are being adjusted appropriately 
based on the size as well. You can check your padding, your margin, your font size to make sure those are scaling up and down the way you expect across these different breakpoints. Now, a shortcut that you can use for this is you can hold Alt and hover. So you don't actually have to go up and click the button. You can just hold Alt, which is a nice little shortcut to be able to activate that inspect element. Now, one of the things I really love about this is let's say I wanna get a screenshot of my entire page on here. So notice I have to scroll a little bit to get that. Well, there is a screenshot button built in, which is pretty amazing. So above any of your panes, you can go to the screenshot button. So if I do the small one, for example, I can trigger a screenshot. I can tell it to do the full page or just the viewport. If I tell it to do full page, it's gonna go and scroll. It's gonna generate that thing. And then it's gonna allow us to kind of like edit on top of it so we can annotate on top of it. We can do other cool things or just save it as is. So this is really, really small, but you can see uh, that I've got my image here. I can add stickers and annotate and crop and just save this. If I were to save the bigger, wider version of this, you'd be able to see it a little bit better but you can download the image and you can share that with um, uh, uh, anyone you want, your friends, your family, or like a designer, if you wanna call out like, this doesn't look right in the actual website, you can generate that image for the entire page without having to scrolling or uh, without having to scroll. Otherwise you'd have to install like a plugin or something in, um, in Google Chrome. So this is much, much easier. All right, there's several different uh, settings in here inside of the debug tools. So under each frame, you have a section for debug tools and there's some really cool ones in here. So there's one, there's contrast checker. So you can see the contrast uh, numbers popping up in here. If I were to come over and change the text of this to like text, text blue uh, 700 or something, this should change. And then now you see that this is a red for, uh, for the color contrast. So that'll automatically just call that out for you, make it really obvious that, hey, you're doing something wrong. And then uh, also a couple of other ones in here. The Z index is actually really interesting. So you can see I've got a Z index of negative 10, of 10, of 10 up here. That actually is super helpful because how many of us have been in situations where we can't figure out a layout because we don't understand uh, what our uh, Z indices are. Another cool one is the ARIA attributes. So again, really focus on accessibility here. So you can see that these uh, little icons have a role of image and then they have an area uh, hidden an area label for each one of them so that people that are using screen readers will get context for what those actual images are. If they're not able to see, they'll get that context. So a really big call out here for your ARIA attributes, which is really, really nice. You also have some cool features in here for uh, disabling CSS and JavaScript. So you can turn that stuff all the way off. It's obviously gonna look terrible after you do that. But if you wanted to test like what your site looks like without JavaScript, in this case, I'm using Astro with a static page. So it's gonna load everything and it should be pretty good on here even without JavaScript. So it's still gonna load everything, which is great, uh, but I can get rid of that. So really cool like menu options there that you can take advantage of. Another thing that's uh, up here is ruler. So you can actually add like a grid if you want to. So if I say I want a hundred pixel grid, it's gonna add this. I could use that from a design perspective to kind of mimic what you have inside of Figma. So usually they use grid systems and Figma to design pages and you can use this in here as well, which is pretty neat. Now, one of the underrated things inside of here is a color picker. I feel like I always am having to install extensions to find color pickers and this is a really good color picker right in here. So not only is this a great color picker, you can also compare this with different backgrounds to see the contrast. You can see your previously selected one, uh, you can edit selected color using a color palette. You can do change the size of the text for visibility. So if I change this, you'll start to see what uh, what it looks like on the background uh, and then the text size and all this kind of stuff. So this is a, one of the better color pickers I've seen. Again, something you'd have to add a plugin or extension with uh, with Google Chrome if you did that instead. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is the panel that you can open. So if we uh, open the DevTools panel, you have kind of the regular DevTools that you're used to with the elements, the console, network, et cetera. You have all that. You also have this info tab, and this is has a couple of my very favorite features in here. So one is the outline. It'll show you your H1s and your H2s, et cetera. And so inside of here, if I were to come back and change this to an H1, for example, the rule says you're only supposed to have one H1. So this is gonna refresh and say, hey, you should only use one H1 on a page so that I can go do this and fix this back to an H2 or a P tag or whatever. So the outline just gives you a quick like overview of what are the things inside of here. And then the very coolest thing, I think this is my favorite feature in here, is the meta information. 
So if you've ever like wondered if you typed in your title correctly and you have to go back to, let's see, how do we do this? If we go into edit and then go into head and then go in, find the meta tag for title. Well, all that stuff is right here. So it shows you your, uh, your title, your description, your logo here, checks whether or not you're mobile friendly, the viewport, the encoder or the car set, the language, et cetera, which is all great. It also, more importantly, most importantly, favorite feature, it also shows you the SEO previews uh, for if you post this on Twitter or Facebook or Slack or LinkedIn or Discord or Telegram or Google search. So it has all this stuff built in. You'd have to go to like external websites to be able to enter your page. And that wouldn't work with your local host URL because it's going to have to actually like download the page to do this. So this works right inside of Polypane, which is really, really neat. So that is my favorite feature by far. I'm curious what you all think. Again, this is a paid product, so it's kind of up to you whether or not you think this makes sense. But there is an exclusive discount code slash link in the description below that you can use. But I'm curious what you think and maybe try it out. So there's a two week uh, free trial, 14 days, no credit card needed. You can try it out, use all the features, then you can make a decision for yourself. The last thing I'll mention is this is one of those team or one of those tools that I think is valuable enough for you to advocate or at least to ask to your management, hey, can I have support to buy this tool? And it's going to speed up my process because of this, this, and this, or it's going to help us make more accessible sites because it has built-in checkers for X, Y, and Z. Tons of good features, definitely worth a look. So I hope you check it out. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time.